Number 14. A 500 milliliter bottle of water at room temperature and a 2 liter bottle of water at the same temperature were placed in a refrigerator. After 30 minutes, the 500 milliliter bottle of water had cooled to the temperature of the refrigerator. An hour later, the 2 liter of water bottle had cooled to the same temperature. When asked which sample of water lost the most heat, one student replied that both bottles lost the same amount of heat because they started at the same temperature and finished at the same temperature. A second student thought that the 2 liter bottle of water lost more heat because there was more water. A third student believed that the 500 milliliter bottle of water lost more heat because it cooled more quickly. And the fourth student thought that it was not possible to tell because we do not know the initial temps and the final temperature of the water. Indicate which of these answers is correct and describe the error in each of the other answers. Okay, cool. So this will kind of be like a cool theoretical concept type of question. Now we're talking about heat loss and heat gained. Right, they're telling me that basically we took some water, we took two samples of water, a 500 milliliter bottle and a two liter bottle, and we threw it in the refrigerator and both of them lost heat, right? It became colder. When we're talking about heat transfer, heat gain and heat lost, we think of this formula right here. So let me just make this a little smaller and let me do two of these. So Q equals MS delta T, right? If we just look at the lettering here, Q is the heat, right? Either the heat gained or the heat lost, whether it's a positive or a negative. The M stands for the mass of the object that we're either heating up or cooling down. S is the, the specific heat of the element or the compound. This number is a constant value for all compounds and elements, depending on what the compound and element is. And the delta T, is the change in temperature. Now, in this case, I'll put it up here, that delta T always equals the initial temp minus the final temp. So it's always Ti minus Tf. Now, we have two different substances here. So I'm just going to list them. On the left-hand side, we'll say that this is the 500 mil water bottle. And on the other side, there's a two liter water bottle, okay? I don't know why there's, okay, cool. So now, if we just look at the formulas, right, and look at what they gave us, let's do, you know, let's talk about the change in the temps first. Now, they said that the 500 milliliter water bottle was at room temp, that was initial, and the two liter water bottle was at the same temperature. So for both of these, the initial temp was the same. The initial temperature was at room temp, right? Now, we put the both of the water bottles in the refrigerator, and since the refrigerator only has one temperature, right, the cooling happens at the same temperature as well, right? So the final temp would be whatever the, the, the temperature of the refrigerator would be, right, or whatever the temperature is. But I'm just going to say that the final temp is the same for both of them, right? It's just got to be a colder number. So if the initial temp is the same and the final temp is the same, does the heat gained or lost, right, or the Qs, right, does that have to do with delta T? No, because for both the 500 mils and the two liters, they started at the same temperature and they ended at the same temperature. So the delta T for both of these would be exactly the same. Since there's no change in the numbering between the two, it has nothing to do with like theory if one is increased or decreased. So now let's go to the S. For both of them, it's water, right? And the specific heat of water is a constant number. It's 4.184. Do we really need to know that for this? No, but since it's the same number, this has nothing to do with the difference in heat loss or heat gained. Now let's look at the M. The M is the mass, and the mass has to be in grams, right? Now they they didn't tell us a gram value, but they did tell us that it was 500 mils versus two liters, right? So if we just put this into milliliters, just to have the same units, I could just multiply two liters times a thousand, right? And I would get 200 milliliters. Now, just remember that the density of water, generally speaking, the density of water is one 
gram per milliliter. So if you have one gram, you have one milliliter. If you have two grams, you have two milliliters. Three grams, three milliliters. So the same number, it's the same between mils and grams. So technically, this would be 500 grams, and this would be 2,000 grams. Now we're looking at a different number between the two. This is the deciding factor of who is going to lose more heat. Since the 500 grams is lower than 2,000, right, the 2-liter bottle or the 2,000-milliliter bottle or the 2,000-gram bottle, this one would lose more heat, right? Since this was only 500 grams, this would lose less heat. And I say lose because it's cooling down. If you're going down in temp, your Q is going to be a negative. Does that really matter for this? Mm, not really. But we do have a difference here. The 2-liter bottle technically would lose more heat, and the 500 ml bottle would lose less heat. So let's just see which of these answers are correct. Let's go with the first student, starting over here. One student replied that both bottles lost the same amount of heat. Okay, so we already know that that's not true because they started at the same temp and finished at the same temp. We already discussed this, that this would be incorrect, right? So the error in here is that, you know, the student said that both bottles lost the same amount of heat. Since the delta T's are the same, that has nothing to do with it, but one had a greater mass. So that's why this student is incorrect, okay? So let's go with the next one, the second student. The second student thought that the two liter bottle of water lost more heat, okay, because there was more water. And if there was more water, that means that there's a higher mass. So this is really saying a higher mass. This is the correct answer, right? So the second student thought that the two liter bottle of water lost more heat. That's what we said because there was more water. So we already know now that student two is the correct one. So we kind of answered basically half the problem. Let's just go through the errors in student three and four. So starting with here, here's the third student. A third student believed that the 500 ml bottle of water lost more heat. We already know that that's incorrect. The 500 lost less heat because it cooled more quickly. When you're talking about cooling more quickly, you're talking about a time. But if I look at Q equals MS delta T, is there any time variable in here? Is there any lowercase t? No. So who cares how fast something happened? that number would not be computed in this formula. Time has nothing to do with this formula. So that's why the third student is incorrect. And then the last student, the fourth student, thought that it was not possible to tell because we do not know the initial temperature and the final temperature. I mean, we don't know the initial temp, the exact initial temp and the final temp, but they said that the 500 ml bottle was at room temp and the two liter was the same, so this is the same. And then they said that the two liter bottle cooled to the same temp as the 500. So this is the same. And just like we said before, that has nothing to do with the difference between the heat. So there you go. Student two was correct. And this is the reasoning. I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video. This is a great theoretical concept question going over Q equals MS delta T. And let's just keep going, all right? I'll see you in future lessons. Bye-bye.